Hi, and welcome to Art Muse. This is artist Dana Haynes, and today we're going to be talking about making money as an artist and how that what a challenge that really is. Um, in this speed painting drawing, I'm doing a wine glass with wine splash. I was in photography. Obviously, lighting is important to me. I went back and looked at some of my murals and some of my other artwork and thought that I needed to concentrate on this. I've seen some people using gel pens and stuff to help with lighting, so here I am practicing that. Um, but as far as the challenge before us all, really, um, these, I've got about 13 things I've come up with and uh, another one on the side that is fairly new. Um, the most obvious number one is get the studio job. Everybody wants the studio job, but until that studio job comes, you know, you can be building up your career, doing things that would increase your knowledge in your, if you went freelance, which is the second way to go, you know, going directly to your fans or your customers. But when you, when you choose a backup career, it doesn't necessarily have to be washing dish, dishes or waiting tables. Um, you can choose to study something that would help enhance your knowledge about selling your own artwork. I ended up taking a business course and doing, you know, getting a accounting certificate in my early 20s helping, helping me get a job with a company that was um, basically a marketing company that worked with mobile and they were really good at marketing. I mean, they made you look at candy bars a totally different way. <laughs> you know, so you could see the art in marketing and how being consistent is important and doing this in a timely manner, you know, your customers become, start to expect it and rely on you that you're going to have this sell and they start paying attention to it. Um, the second thing that I did, you know, on this, I hate to call them backup careers now because they contributed to um, me ending up in a studio where I was very happy. Um, I went and with a computer explosion in the, you know, early 90s, I went and went back to school to community college and studied computer science and learned programming and you know I know quite a few languages now <laughs> but I figured with gaming and stuff like that I remember somebody contacted me and they wanted me to draw you know an itty bitty I don't know like an asteroid or something you know for a game and I didn't know enough about programming to to, to be I was kind of scared of, you know, what they wanted me to do, you know, that I would mess it up or something. So I studied HTML. I got comfortable with web design and kind of figured that if in worst case scenario is I could always design websites for people and, you know, started making little graphics at home and practicing, got a drawing board and start practicing all that. So I was always working towards something that would enhance, you know, what I already knew how to do traditionally. So, but the second way to go, and most people do end up going this way, is freelance, you know, going directly to your fans and customers. Um, the th the third way is, you know, to state the obvious is you sell your originals. And you, what you want to do is you want to have a website for that. There are a lot of easy ways to put up a website. Um, when starting to print on canvas came about about a decade ago, I, you know, I know how to do a website, but I didn't really have a lot of time for it. So. I went to ImageKind, so they kind of portfolioed everything, and you pay a little bit more for that, but if you wanted to go to Web, Webly or Squarespace or something like that, it's real easy to follow, or you can pay somebody to, to put it together for you. And you can sell your originals right at your website, put it on your business card, and, you know, 
tote the link around with you, you know, and your signatures and your email and um, on social media, let other people know, hey, check out my website. I mean, don't be obnoxious about it or anything, but putting the link there and, you know, showing them some of your artwork for the originals is definitely a way to go in these days. You can also, you can look at my website. I have this, the fourth way is to take commissions and you can do that over the, the internet with the website now and there are several art, I think Deviant Art is one that will help you take commissions. Fine Art, you can set the, Fine Art America, you can set up to um, take commissions, self, um, or they do have some kind of system for it. I'm, I'm not, but I think DVNR is more of, you know, so you can take more custom personalized stuff. Um, Etsy is a good site to go to where you can kind of customize order, orders that way as well. But if you look at my website, you'll see that I broke it down into this is the materials, this is um, conference fee, you know, because you a consulting fee because it takes I've had some customers that you know half an hour they knew what they wanted and we got that all covered over the phone and then I had some customers that would eat up you know six ten you know twenty hours of your time just talking on the phone wanting more of a pal than than an actual artist <laughs> so you know you, you need to make it clear to them that there is, my time's precious, you know. So I included a, a consulting fee in mine, um, which I can always, if they're not being obnoxious or anything, I can always drop that and lower the price for them a little bit. Um, but it, the drop down, if you take a look, it goes through, these are the materials, these are the different kinds of artwork I can do, and it gets into you know, at least they got an idea of the base fee that it's going to cost. And they can, you know, each commission is a little bit different. and But at least you have standard pricing that way. <laughs> so you can take commissions on a website. That would be number four. Um, you got to kind of think like, like you're a brand. And as you're working through all this that that's what you're working towards um, you the other way you can take commissions there is a uh, websites called Fiverr Upwork and Freelancer that you can post I can do XYZ and have people you know accept or pick you out of a crowd and take commissions that way so that would be number four, commissions. Um, if you build the website, number five would be affiliate links. Um, I find this useful. And I was, like, when you're listening to other artists on, on YouTube or whatnot that, you know, you want to know what tools or materials they're, they're using. Um, some of these people are putting them, the links in their YouTube channel and their descriptions after the video. I've done it as well. Um, I was curious, you know, I seen this um, one artist and I was like, what is he using? Because his stuff is just gorgeous and he's, I can almost do what he's doing, but, <laughs> you know, so I went and I, I wanted to know what materials he was using and I bought some of them. So, you know, using affiliate links, you make a small commission. When I did a website in the 90s, um, that's what supported the website. It paid for, you know, the hosting and everything else and a little bit of money on the, you know, um, side. And <laughs> it... Um, It supported the website. Um, basically, you know, I was getting divorced, and then right about the time that it was really proving that yes, affiliate links do work. People do want to know the materials you're using or what you would recommend. So, I highly suggest 
you know, taking the time to sign up with Amazon and, and do that. Um, that way you can pick out, they sell everything, that way you can pick out, the, well, this is the TV, this is the computer screen I'm using, this is the computer I'm using, this is the drawing tablet, this is the, you know, or um, the colored pencils that I use. And then you can pick up a, a small, derive a small in, income from that. Uh, the sixth way would be sponsors. And basically you see this a lot with um, people like telling who they, which website they host with or, you know, and picking up um, extra sponsorship that way. I mean, it's kind of like think NASCAR, you know, who all around you would sponsor you um, to do what you're doing, you know, and believe in you. It doesn't necessarily have to be be local or, you know, somebody that you know real well. But there are certain businesses, maybe you're doing, when I first did a Facebook page, um, one of the um, art suppliers kind of contacted me. And I wished I had been thinking about it because they could have been a great sponsor for me. You know, um, and if you're an influencer type, they're more than willing, usually some of these art, art supply places are willing to back you. If you're doing real well at what, what kind of art you do and you use their supplies. Um, so I think that's pretty much, I mean, sponsors is kind of self-explanatory. Um, but it's kind of different than affiliate links. Affiliate links, you're linking directly to a product that you, you would sell. Whereas the sponsorship is, think of it like a mini commercial. Here's an example. Like um, Anchor for podcasts. You can use that platform for free, but they'll have you put in like your sponsor at the beginning of a podcast. You know, so, and, you know, you can rack up the money that way, which is sort of monetization, and I'll get into that later um, in the video. The other way that you can make money is online shops, prints. Um, I have a lot to say about prints because I, you know, there are, I'm on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different um print sites and I kind of I do different kinds of artwork so I had to sit and think about well do I want to invest in a high-end printer um, this site does high-end archival museum quality prints I definitely want this this type of artwork on that site but this this site <laughs> this other site does more postery type you know, kind of prints. And this one does t-shirts, but there for a while I was looking for my artwork doesn't really look good to me on just a regular t-shirt, that it needed to be an all graphic t-shirt, so I went with size Society 6. So what I'm telling you is kind of look around for at these different sites and how it you know, what they have to offer before you jump on the bandwagon because you don't want to do what I did and be on six different sites. It's time consuming. And when when you use online um, prints and have somebody else do it for you, you get the higher quality than maybe than you could produce at home. But it also saves you time. I mean, you could spend 10 to 20, depending on your order size, you know, a lot of time, you know, just packaging instead of getting artwork done. So I personally went with, yes, I want an online printer and an online shop. The other downfall to that is, you know, you're kind of surrounded um, by a bunch of other artists and it's easy for them to find your artwork, start to like it, and then oh, pretty shiny and click on somebody else's artwork and suddenly you've lost your customer that you took the effort to bring in. So it, it has its upside and its downside. You know, sometimes pe 
people find you on the internet because you are grouped with all these other artists and sometimes you just fall into the sea of that. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, number nine would be digital downloads. Um, they do them on DeviantArt. They do them on Etsy. You can do it on Etsy. Uh, I know there's more than that. It seems like it. You can set up a shopping cart like on Webly where you can let them instantly download your artwork. Um, I'm kind of setting up mine where they're made for TV screens or large monitors um, that they can download and for personal use you know, put it on their screensaver for their computer or they can go to YouTube and do it that way or, you know, I'm still working on my site, but it's like a Netflix but for art <laughs> where you flip through. So digital downloads for like the phones, 70% um, of the market now is people on their cell phones. So think in that terms that you may be using your computer, but most people are using their phones these days. So you might want to size your artwork where it, it's perfect for the phone, but they can't really print it, you know, resize it for that. And this is all, this stuff takes time and you got to decide how many products are really worth your time. I've sold probably um, 50, 60 pieces in the last decade. <laughs> Most of that was closer to when I was really paying attention to and posting every day and being consistent every day like you should. Um, and it's time consuming to do that. So you have to weigh your pros and cons of, you know, if I pick the the website for you that caters to the most that you're going to need. Um, do you want those more of a poster type or print type or high quality, high end? You know, think about that kind of stuff before you choose your website because once you get, get especially if you have a lot of artwork like I do, you don't want to spend all your time just moving your artwork around. You know, so Digital downloads and prints um, kind of go together. You can find those on different art sites or put it on your own website. Another thing that people are moving to is subscriptions. Basically, you have tiers and you um, offer a subscription service to, to your fan base and you spend X amount of time given to tier one, tier two, tier, you know, depending on how many you do. Try and keep those low. For some odd reason, I can't do anything small. <laughs> so I have more than three tiers. It, it, you can keep it as simple as possible. It helps your, your fan base choose something. The other thing to keep in mind with um, subscriptions is like using Patreon. I think DeviantArt is moving towards having having one of those is um, and I know YouTube is that you can do just as much for five people as you can 20 or 100 so you know I would hold off on that until I had more of a fan base and then offer the tiers but Patreon is definitely is something you might want to look into now monetization is number 11 and that's YouTube, Facebook, podcasts. Um, yeah, you can monetize with Facebook now, although you have to hit a certain amount before they'll accept you. And YouTube has gone to doing that. And honestly, most what I'm finding, most people don't do it for a paycheck from YouTube. They're doing it because they're filling a real need like myself. I wanted my kids to be able to hear my voice, you know, later on if something passed, if I passed, that they would have something that they could hear my voice and listen to me and kind of a guide of about artwork because I've got all this sitting online and somebody's going to have to handle it, you know, and 
um, kind of manage it when I'm gone. So I kind of leave the, the videos are my way of letting them kind of get an idea of, oh, this is what, kind of what you're doing. And she's over here, 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 and here, you know. So monetization, don't expect big checks unless you hit something on like really niche that other people haven't done that just explodes. Most of your checks are, you know, going to supplement your income once you get to that point. And I think you have to have a thousand subscribers. So I don't even really worry about it. I'm doing this for my, you know, to um, enhance what I've already done. So the twelfth way that people are making money as artists online is they're teaching classes and they're sharing a skill. It doesn't actually, you don't actually have to be a Disney artist or work at one of the, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, artists like that are going to get more attention paid to them for good reason but you know if you have a skill set and you know how to do something very well you could teach a course on it or share it in a video or a lot of people are getting sponsored by Skillshare and setting up courses over there to and that complement their YouTube channel and making a decent income that way. The 13th way and I've kind of semi done this but I turned mine into a software program, is create a book. I, you know, when the kids were little, used to draw things out and let them color them, print them up and color them. And I turned mine into a software program, but you could easily put together a coloring book or an adult coloring book, or, you know, if you want to really get into it, a Kickstarter program where you can ask your fan base for, um, help putting together a really nice book. I mean, a lot of artists and photographers go that route. And I have it in the back of my head. There were books that I bought when I was little in grade school that, you know, how to draw, you know, with circles and squares and triangles to make little cutesy tunes kind of stuff. And I used to draw that, um, doodle that kind of stuff all the time when I was younger that, I'm kind of wanting to be, make now that I'm older as an artist. So there are a lot of different kind of book ideas that you can come up with. Some are creating comic books. Um, don't think that any of these um, avenues are easy <laughs> or going to be done quickly, that they're going to take a learning curve and that you're going to have to spend some time learning how to do the layout on some of that stuff. And, you know, definitely on any of these topics, you know, listen more to watch a couple videos on it, search for it on YouTube and see what others have to say about this. And the 14th, basically, you're going to do whether you're, you know, doing this studio job or not, uh, definitely going to do freelance no matter which way you go on this is you're going to build your customer base and your audience. Um, it's a good idea to keep, if you can, without being obnoxious, collect emails, um, send out newsletters, you know, keeping in touch with your um, customer base. And a great way to do this, you know, the 14th way is basically kind of going back to the old art show gallery type system, which um, now they have conventions, expos, art fairs, you know, that you can set up a table or a booth and you can sell your book, you can sell your artwork, you can get to know and pick up new customers that way, our fans. Um, and all through this, you know, like I said, whether you go freelance or you do get your dream studio job, is you need to be connecting to the art, art community all the while. You want to be taking a, a course to improve this or that. Like I said, I you know, I figured I needed to know how to do some of this tax stuff, so I learned about accounting. <laughs> you know, it ended up helping me and feeding me 
while I was still learning different skills. So take a course, share what you're learning online and, you know, do small snip snippets and don't, my suggestion is don't spend all your time on social media. Social media does not pay you to, to be there <laughs> unless, you know, I don't know, unless you're like Brad Pitt or something. No, they're probably not going to pay you to be there. Um, just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be, it's a challenge. It doesn't have to be a nightmare. And that's kind of my two cents. I hope you enjoy my my drawing, my painting. I did find one flaw with this that I that I'm doing. I drawing from a, a picture that was on a black background or a gray background, and I'm like drawing it on a white background. So, you know, I'm kind of what am I going to do with that? You know, so I may end up. But this is my speed drawing, and I hope you enjoyed watching while I talk. And, oh, there is one other way. And YouTube kind of has it where when you do the, the live sessions that people can, like, they don't call them tips. I call them tip. I, we have a, a tavern that was a family tavern my dad bought that, you know, I'm very used to putting a tip jar in front of me and don't have a problem with it in, in the world. Now, the gamers have come up with something over on kind of on Twitch and Discord and Streamlabs that, you know, you can pay if I set up a screen where somebody can tip you $5, $10, and 20 or whatever, or set their own amount, and you can give them a link to that. I've started linking that in my own videos and, and, um, or down, down below my video in the descriptions, tip your artists, you know, because people do realize this stuff takes time and want to see you most, if they've took the time to, to watch your video, want to see you do well. And there's nothing wrong with asking, you know, tip me, I got, gotta <laughs> eat. <laughs> so tip jar was like my, my other happy place. So, um, that's pretty much like what I'm doing. Please sh be sure to to hit that like button or subscribe button and give me some feedback in the comment. And if you have other ways or ideas, be sure to, to let me know down below.